The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the guests and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of the hosts and creators of this program. This is the Pet Buzz. This is the Pet Buzz. Freshly collected with news, celebrity pet gossip, and the latest pet trends. The Pet Buzz gives you the latest 411 on everything pet related. Everything pet related. Hosted by pet trendologist Charlotte Reed and Dr. Michael Fleck. And here's the Dynamic, Dynamic pet, pet Duo. Duo. You are listening to the Pet Buzz, the ultimate in pet talk radio, and we thank you for coming back and joining us each week. You know, it's really funny, Dr. Flack. I know we're talking off script, but I got um, an email from somebody, and at the bottom of the email it said, stay healthy, stay, oh, stay safe, stay healthy, and be kind. And I started thinking about that. And you know what? We're doing everything that we can, eating good meals, going to bed early. But the be kind part, I thought, The more and more we become more anxious, the more difficult it is to be kind. Exactly. So I'm trying to think of ways that I can be a little kinder during this time. Who can I help? What kind of animals can I help? Start with me. Oh, you're, I'm always (laughs) kind to you, please. Okay. So, well, I'm moving on. You know, that's the, that's the interesting thing about doing this show as a couple. But before we uh, start our weekly countdown, I'm happy to report we have two new affiliates. We have 560 KWTO AM in Springfield, Missouri. And they signed up to air the Pet Buzz on Saturday mornings from 8 to 9 a.m. in that central time. And I want to give a big shout out to 1240 KCLV AM in Clovis, New Mexico. They air the Pet Buzz on Saturdays at 11 p.m. Mountain Time. You know, Dr. Fleck, there are people who, pet owners who listen to the radio, uh, listen to our show at all times of the day. So, we're so excited to be working with these new affiliates. Uh, and I want to remind everybody out there to sign up. Don't forget to sign up for the new, the new Pet Buzz newsletter. We want to keep in touch with you. So now let's kick off the show with this week's countdown. Well, in segment four, we're talking with University of Missouri veterinarian Tim Evans about carefully disinfecting a home with pets. And in seg three, we're talking about a new and safer way with Jenny Pan, an entrepreneur, about her invention, CarePod, and how she partnered with a major airline to make travel safer for pets. And in two, our celebrity portion of the show, get the 411 about our favorite celebs. And in Flex Facts, I'm going to tell you why it is more important than ever to wash or bathe your pet at least a few times a month. And in segment one, we're talking with Jim Tedford, president and CEO from the Association for Animal Welfare Advancement, about how shelters are responding to the coronavirus, the corona crisis. Hey, Jim, thank you for taking the time out to talk to us on the Pet Buzz today. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Really appreciate being here. So before we get started, tell us about the Association for Animal Welfare Advancement. Sure. So the association is the only professional association for leaders in the animal welfare and animal care and control industries. So basically, I when when folks who don't understand animal welfare ask me, I say, if you think about the American Dental Association and dentists, we're basically that for folks in animal welfare. So if you're a leader or someone who aspires to be a leader in a shelter, rescue group, that sort of thing, then we are your professional association. Great. And we're so glad to have you here. So uh, let's just start off with what everybody wants to know. How were shelters and their workers as well as volunteers faring in this uh, pandemic environment that we're living in now? I tell you, Charlotte, it's been really remarkable. The, uh, the the shelter world really kind of pulled together. We've got a group of folks, leaders in the industry, who are meeting every single day uh, by telephone to really talk through what are the hot topics of the day, how are we going to manage through this whole thing. One of the things most impressive, though, was that when when the shelter community as a whole put the message out to their own individual communities that they needed help, 
that they needed to start to empty out their facilities because clearly shelters are operated by humans and humans need to be socially isolating. So we needed to do what we could to protect the people working in shelters as well as, as the folks who visit them. So it, it was really remarkable the number of people who came in to adopt and to provide foster homes for the animals that were living in a shelter environment. Yeah, we, we've seen many, many shelters that are virtually empty as a result of this, and it's, it's it's fantastic. I mean, they're they're not only are the are the shelters safer, and their and their people can go home and take care of themselves and their families, but those animals are happier. You know, living in a shelter, in even the best shelter, is not the perfect environment for a dog or cat. So if you can get them out into a private home where they're going to get that one-on-one -on -one attention and love and 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 care that they need, they're going to be far happier and far better off. Hey, we get the impression from the news outlets and shelters themselves that reveal so many of the celebs are, uh, and others, of course, are fostering dogs that shelters are really out of dogs. So why is fostering a win-win situation? Well, I tell you, it's it's a win-win for a lot of reasons. I think the fact that, that these animals are now in a home environment with families and they're there to ride this thing out. Another sort of little side benefit, I think, to the sheltering world is what we love to call foster failure. Oftentimes, foster turns into a euphemism for adoption. I, it certainly has happened to me more than once when I've tried to take an animal home for a short period of time, thinking I would get him over a hump and then bring him back in for adoption. We've ended up with a lot of permanent pets in our house that way. <laughs> so that's certainly, that's certainly a plus. And of course, in this situation, in this pandemic, it, not only are now folks, they've got somebody to sort of hunker down with. And, and there's some real value in that. I get tremendous comfort from my dogs. And so I, I think that's a, a great benefit for humans who are, who find themselves suddenly isolated when we're used to being in this hustle bustle all the time. That's certainly the case. And then of course the, the probably primary benefit is that, that now shelters have been able to clear out. Most shelters are still operating with skeleton crews. There are still, you know, a handful of animals in house. What we're really hoping for is that once this thing passes and we get back to whatever normal looks like at that point, that those foster homes will still be just and we can continue to employ them to help us um, provide at least temporary housing for these animals who really, really need that care. You know, one of the things I've been really impressed with, the fact that a lot of shelters have come up with all of these creative ways um, to get animals out of the shelter and then I think recently I read about a car placement. People filled out the forms, like these Google forms, and then they got to spend time in their car with uh, dogs that they potentially wanted to adopt. And I thought that was like super creative to get dogs out of the shelter. Yeah, you know, I we, we say desperate times call for desperate measures. And we've really, I think the shelter world has always been very creative in the way we sort of market the, the animals we have available for adoption. I had a friend once, I, I took a job, a short-term job in sales, and a friend asked if, if they thought I could make a living in sales. And another friend commented that I'd been selling used dogs for years, <laughs> so I should be pretty good at it. So we're, we're, we've always been a creative field. You know, I think we, we've had to. And, and of course, we also, because we, we are raising funds constantly, we, we stretch those dollars as far as we can. So instead of spending a lot of money, we have to expend a lot of creativity to make things happen. And at a time like this, when, you know, it, it, it's there, nothing's normal and it's really impossible to, to be open and have folks conduct adoptions the normal way, we've had to come up with some creative ways to make that happen as well. I, our, our field continuously amazes me. I, I've been doing this for 36 years and, and I, I learn new stuff every single day from my colleagues on the shelter side. Well, it's great to hear. Well, you know, unfortunately, Jim, our time's about up, but we, both Charlotte and I, would like to give you at least 30 seconds to emphasize anything you wish to emphasize to our listeners. Sure. So probably the primary thing that I'd like to emphasize, you know, have a plan B. If, if, if Who's going to care for your pet if you get sick and are not able to do that yourself? Um, if that person gets sick, who's the third in line to, to take care of that animal? Well, Jim Tedford, uh, thank you for joining us today on the Pet Buzz to talk about the Shelter and Animal Welfare Organization during this horrible coronavirus pandemic. 
Thank you all so much and stay safe out there. Well, for more information, visit the AAWA.org. Up next, celebrity pet gossip and flex facts. You are listening to The Pet Buzz with pet trendologist Charlotte Reed and veterinarian Dr. Michael Fleck. We would love to communicate with you via social media. Use The Pet Buzz social media channels on Twitter and Facebook to make a comment or ask a question. Post a picture of your pet on Instagram and tell us about his or her unique personality. You can also write to us at team at thepetbuzz.com. For more information about our show, our guests, and buzzworthy freebies, visit us at thepetbuzz.com. Warmer temperatures mean more time outside. You have sunscreen for yourself, but what about Fido? According to the American Animal Hospital Association and the American College of Veterinary Dermatology, pets need sunscreen too. Use EpiPet Sun Protector, the only FDA-approved pet sunscreen on short-haired, light-colored, hairless, golden retrievers, and other dogs susceptible to skin cancer. Contained in a sports bottle, EpiPet allows you to turn the bottle upside down, making it easier to spray your dog all over to protect your dog from the sun all day and every day. Visit epi-pet.com. My name is Mike Ruiz, and I was born and raised in Montreal, Canada, and now I live in New Jersey. The thing that made me fall in love with Oliver was the very first time I met him, he was being fostered by a friend of mine whom I was visiting. I opened the door to my friend's house, and Oliver came running up to me, sat at my feet, and looked up at me with the most beautiful, big, brown, soulful eyes. And within 24 hours, I had filled out all the paperwork, and Oliver was my son. I've experienced a lot of discrimination with Oliver. We would walk down the street and people would literally cross the street you know when they would see us coming you know they saw like a menacing pit bull type dog but just found it so baffling because Oliver was the sweetest gentlest creature that I've ever met in my entire life sadly I lost Oliver in August of 2018 I wanted to commemorate him in a way that was very meaningful so I got this tattoo of him it's just such an amazing thing knowing that I carry him in my heart I now carry him on my arm My name is Mike Ruiz, and Oliver and I are individuals. Thank you so much for joining the Pet Buzz. This show is hosted by the Pet Dynamic Duo. I'm pet trendologist Charlotte Reed. And I'm veterinarian Dr. Michael Fleck. So now it's time for Celebrity Pet News. So let's talk Tim Tebow. Last week, Tim Tebow introduced us to his growing canine family. It seems like everybody these days is getting more dogs. If you didn't know, the religious sports star is like you and me. He is starstruck and he named his new trio of dogs after some of our favorite celebs. So Team Tebow now consists of Paris the Dalmatian, Kobe the Golden Retriever, and Chunk. Chunk is a Burmese mountain dog. I just have one question for Tim. Is Chunk named after Chelsea Handler's dog, Chunk? I gotta know. Tim's welcoming of new pets comes four months after the athlete said goodbye to his dog, Bronco. So, Tim, I'm glad you recovered. I'm glad you're keeping busy with your new trio of dogs. Okay, so some more celebrity pet news includes one of the Game of Thrones canine actors has passed away. It seems that Odin, the dog portrayed Brandon Stark's direwolf in the first season of the HBO series, succumbed to cancer this week. His family announced this past Thursday. They wrote, it's an incredible piece of luck to have a pet you love so well become world famous and touch so many people's hearts. He was always fond of the beach and his favorite treats, which he had almost every day before his passing. I'm sure all pet owners can relate to that. I mean, who doesn't want to give their pet lots and lots of love and lots and lots of treats on a daily basis and even right up to the end? Well, this I found really funny, and uh, it has to do with Montana. Well, in Montana, one reporter learned that it was necessary to practice his social distancing with members of the animal kingdom. Dion Broxton, originally from Baltimore, is a reporter with KTVM, the NBC affiliate in Butte, Montana. And he was in Yellowstone National Park covering the closing of the park amid the coronavirus pandemic. But some bison had a very different idea. You have to visit our social media streams on the Pet Buzz to see his reaction to a herd of bison heading his way while he was trying to report the story. Let's just say he gave some serious side-eye in this clip. 
And lastly, Doug the Pug teamed up with Planet Fitness and hosted his first ever workout session as part of the gym's giant home work-in series on Friday evenings. Planet Fitness has been hosting its new series of free fitness classes for everyone, including non-members, and streaming them live on their Facebook page daily at 7 p.m. Check out Doug's workout on their Facebook page. But before we move on, I want to remind you to sign up for the Pet Fuzz newsletter at newsletter at thepetfuzz.com. Up next is Flex Facts, and Dr. Fleck is with us today. Welcome to Just the Facts. Just the Facts. Fact or fiction? Just the Facts, ma'am. You want answers! I want the truth! This is going to take long. You got the time. And Dr. Fleck is with us today. So, Dr. Fleck, I'm glad you're back. Well, I am back. Today, I want to talk about and the need and the importance of keeping your pet hygienically clean, especially during this time of the pandemic. Okay, so why is it important to keep your pet clean at this time? Well, think about this visually. Pets don't become infected with the coronavirus. At least there's no reports of that yet that are confirmed. Mm -hmm. But what if you're a coronavirus infected person and you cough on your pet? And so then the hair coat can be infused with the coronavirus. Or maybe your pet is serving as a fomite, like a surface contamination. Well, that's what it would become then. Okay. It could become a fomite. We hug our pets. We pet them. We lick them. We do everything with our pets. You, you lick your pet? Well, my pet licks me, but you know. You mean you kiss your pet? Yeah, yeah, And all the pets sleep on top of you. And all the pets sleep on top of me. So think about it. Only I would know that. So think about this. The, the the pet doesn't become infected, but it's carrying those diseases, whether it's coronavirus or any other virus or other okay. infective agent. So what's really important then is to keep that pet hygienically clean, just like we're keeping ourselves clean and the rest of the environment clean. We know it must be difficult during this time to keep our pets clean because a lot of people, especially we live in a area where there are a lot of seniors. And a lot of seniors take their pets to the grooming shop. I was just talking to one of your clients today who told me she didn't bathe her dog. Her dog had fleas. So I suggested she go back inside and buy some EpiPet shampoo. Yes. And then also take it to the grooming shop. So how often, I guess my question is, so so now people have to combat bathing their pet, uh, whether it's in the house, in the sink, or the backyard. But uh, and I'll make sure I post something about how to bathe your pet effectively. But how often should you be bathing your pet? Let's just say how many times a month now, or should it be done? All right. The, this is really a very personal question for veterinarians making their own interpretation as their personal approach is. But I recommend that that each pet be bathed at least once weekly. That's now. That's not like. I recommend that all the time. Actually, during this time, I recommend that they be bathed uh, even more frequently than that. Um, but you have to use the proper shampoo and the proper products that are going to be effective, that are healthy for the pet and not deleterious for the, the health of the skin. Now, I know a lot of people right now are bathing or looking for products that contain chlorhexidine, a disinfectant and antiseptic that is used for skin disinfection. Should we be looking at a shampoo like that? Yeah, I think that that's one of the shampoos that you can be looking at. I think that really almost any shampoo that's a pet shampoo, don't use human shampoo. Okay. But using any pet shampoo would be helpful. There are certain ones that I think are much better at this time. You mentioned those containing chlorhexidine. Yes, but then you can't bathe with chlorhexidine any more frequently than once every couple of weeks because okay. it'll be too rough on the skin. Right. But there's other products, as you mentioned, our product, the the um, EpiPet products. Those that are, you know, they're antifungal, they're antibacterial, uh, they're disinfectants, the, but they're but they're also they're hygienically healthy for the pet. Right. And they're gentle. I yes, mean, really. That's really important. You want to, if you're going to do it frequently, it needs to be gentle. Okay. Anything else? We have about 30 seconds. That's it. I think cleansing is enough to give that information. Let's not confuse the issue. Take care of your pet hygienically by bathing. 
And that's all the Flex Facts for the week. Well, everyone, that was great. Glad to have Dr. Fleck back. Want you to stick around. More of the pet buzz very soon. Up next, my I Likey of the Week. My name is Michelle Schaefer. I'm the mom of three boys, and I'm from Haddonfield and North Wildwood, New Jersey. I met Aladdin through my work with Lilo's Promise Animal Rescue, and I foster the emaciated dogs that come into our program. Aladdin came to us. He had been dumped at the side of the road. He weighed about 18 pounds. He had broken bones, other wounds, and he was missing 12 teeth. He was the worst abuse case I had ever seen. The most moving experience that I've had while working with Aladdin were when we were first responders at the Pulse nightclub shooting in Orlando, Florida. And Aladdin usually works off leash. He was on leash that night and he led me over to a very specific person. And here that man had been in the nightclub the night of the shootings. He and Aladdin shared a very special moment that really made me cry. Aladdin has changed the way I see the world in a million different ways. The main thing is to treat people with kindness and compassion. My name is Michelle Schaefer, and Aladdin and I are individuals. Does your pet have dry, flaky, and itchy skin? Do you find yourself visiting the veterinarian repeatedly because Fido or Fluffy has skin allergies or ear infections? I love animals and want my pets to be healthy. So I asked our vet, who recommended EpiPet Ear Cleaner. It's super simple, and it even smells good. Every week I use it on both my dog and my cat to gently remove wax and debris. (laughs) I even told my friend Aiden to try EpiPet on his dog Sophie, who always had red ears. But not anymore. Now we both have happy and healthy pets. Thanks, EpiPet. Developed by a veterinarian. EpiPet is a revolutionary, high-performance skin and ear care product line made with the finest natural ingredients. EpiPet, for you and your pet, means better pet health. For more information, visit epi-pet.com. Welcome back. You are listening to the Pet Buzz, the best in pet talk radio. I'm veterinarian Dr. Michael Fleck. And I'm pet trendologist Charlotte Reed. So let's kick off segment three with my I Likey of the Week. That's the way it has to be because that's the way I like it. It's genius. I like it. I love it so much. I like it. It's to die for. I like it. My likey of the week is that in response to the call last week by U.S. Agricultural Secretary Sonny Perdue for materials to combat the pandemic. Vet school stepped up to the plate, including North Carolina to Colorado to New York. Vet schools all over the country are really stepping up. North Carolina State University College of Veterinary Medicine in Raleigh, North Carolina, is one of the several vet schools around the country that has donated breathing machines, masks, and other supplies to their human health care counterparts in the fight against COVID-19 pandemic. The Colorado State University Vet School delivered to Purdue Valley Hospital in Fort Collins, a breathing machine, That was brand new, right out of the box. Imagine that. And in New York, the hardest hit place in the United States to date by the new coronavirus, of course, my beloved Cornell College of Veterinary Medicine has loaned two full-service ventilators and a high-flow oxygen unit to the hospital in Manhattan. It is also preparing to send three full-service breathing machines and 19 of the smaller anesthesia ventilators to Cayuga Medical Center in Ithaca, where the school is located, thanks to so many of the vet schools out there in the United States who donated. And here at the Pet Buzz, we really want to recognize your contribution. So Delta Airlines is turning to technology to revolutionize travel with pets. Partnering with CarePod, the airline will offer smart boxes to transport pets across the United States. With a constant connection to the ground, pets will be monitored 24-7. So joining us today is entrepreneur Jenny Pan, the creator of CarePod. Hi, Jenny. Welcome to the Pet Buzz. (laughs) Thank you, Charlotte. It's a pleasure to be here. So Jenny, tell us, what is a CarePod? 
Well, a caropod is actually um, consisted of two separate components. The first piece is the super strong industrial strength pet carriers okay. that is designed to protect your pet. And these pods are embedded with a smart technology, which is the second piece of the caropod solution. And that enables every single pod to be monitored and connected to Delta's control center, which is a specialized team that monitors and looks after everything that will go inside an airplane. How big is it? I mean, could I have a Great Dane in a care pod or a Pomeranian in a care pod? <laughs> one day we will have the ones for the Great Danes. So right now the care pods come in one size and they will fit up to medium sized dog. They'll take um, cats, small dogs and medium sized dogs. Okay. And that would be up to approximately a, a cattle dog size. Okay, a cattle dog size. So we're talking somewhere mm-hmm. about like 40 pounds or less is, or 50 pounds or less. Yeah, 50 pounds or less. Okay, so tell us, what prompted you to create such a smart box? I think uh, I, I've always had pets growing up. Uh, we've always had to move around a lot um, as a child, and we've always had the issues of flying with our pets. And um, as a pet owner, I think, you know, there's a lot of, lot of bad news that we hear about, you know, things happening to our pets during flight. And that that's happened for decades. And I think, and it's ridiculous to me that with the technology that we have now, we can't guarantee that level of safety and protection for our pets. So that, that really kind of pushed me into coming up with a, a real solution that I trust as a pet owner and that other people would trust because it is a really scary thing to think about putting your baby into a place where you don't know what's going on. We're talking with Jenny Pan, if you've just joined us, and she is an entrepreneur who created something called the Care Pod. It's a new safe way for your dogs and cats to travel uh, via plane. So Jenny, who should use Care Pod? I think it, it's really for pet owners who feel like their pets have, uh, you know, require additional level of care. Uh, you know, whether that's a, a smaller puppy, that's fine for the first time. Or, you know, pets, like people, some are better at flying or traveling than others. You'll get dogs or cats that are a little bit more squeamish when they're traveling by car. And we, we then, you know, kind of understand that those pets are naturally a little bit more fearful and, you know, a bit more wary. And then we would suggest care pod for pets that, you know, just that needs that a little bit extra care and protection. Sure. So in other words, if you're a breeder and you're shipping a new puppy, maybe you're the person to use care pod. I mean, you know, or if you're traveling, if your pet is being shipped across the country because you got relocated, Mm -hmm. maybe you should use the care pod. If it's a longer Mm -hmm. flight and you have a bigger dog that you can't travel in cabin with, uh, maybe Mm -hmm. you should use the care pod. So, Tell us, let's move on a little bit. So Jenny, tell us how your partnership with uh, Delta came about. I started the company in 2014 and worked very closely with different airlines um, on the design of the pod and the software. You know, I'm very active uh, with the International Pet Air Travel Association and with uh, IATA as well. And I think it was just uh, through conferences and they had a chance to hear me speak. Um, And I I think it was also the right time where the Delta leadership team, really from a C-level perspective, they took that initiative and had the vision, you know, listening to their passengers that pets are like family. They're becoming increasingly important and people want to travel more and fly more with them. So I think they, they took that initiative and reached out. You're on the forefront. You know what pet owners want. So I think that's one of the reasons I'm excited to have you here. Thank Tell you. us. Oh, you're welcome. No worries. I always love to support our woman entrepreneurs. <laughs> it's important. Likewise. Um, I know. And, and Dr. Flex the same way. He's not here today, but uh, for this interview. So um, tell me, what cities um, am I going to find CarePod? Where's the service available? So CarePod is starting out in eight key cities in mm-hmm. the U.S. That's Atlanta. On the East Coast, we've got Boston, uh, and as well as JFK and LaGuardia from New York. Then on the Florida area, we've got West Palm Beach. 
And on the West Coast, we have Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Minneapolis. Cool. That's quite a range of cities to get started with and big, friendly pet mm-hmm. cities. So that's great. So tell us how the service works. So I'm a pet owner. What do I do? So the first thing you do is when you're heading to the airport, you would head to the special cargo area okay. for pets. And they would be able to take you in, you know, show you a clean care pod, um, explain to you how it works. And once you place your pet inside the care pod, they will then help you finalize all the paperwork and your pet will be taken and checked in. You can then immediately go onto the Delta website, you know, put in your, you know, e-ticket or what they call the airway bill number, uh-huh. and immediately you can start to see your pet's journey. Okay, you can great. do that on your phone. I, mm-hmm. I would assume it's like a reservation, correct? Yes, that's right. Okay. You know, what happens if the pet is ill? How, does anybody know? Or you just have to wait to find out when the pet gets to the other side? When you travel with your pets, one of the necessary legal requirements is that within the week of travel, you must have a vet certificate to state that it is fit to fly mm-hmm. and that it's, you know, up to date with all the vaccinations. So you'll get that issue at your vet. They'll help you check. They will give you a, a letter. On the day of check-in, the agent will also check to make sure that your pet, you know, is, is well on the day. And then when the pets kind of go through the travel process, they are going to be monitored once again by the control center. When they arrive at the destination, all of the pods are fully cleaned, disinfected. You know, these things will take out any virus, any bacteria. Right. Well, that's good to know. Jenny, I want to thank you so much for helping to care for pets who are flying. So good luck with your invention. Uh, we hope to hear more about it when we get back uh, into traveling. So everyone, that was Jenny Pan, creator of the Care Pod. To learn more about her pet protective innovation when your uh, dog is flying, visit flycarepod.com. Up next, I'm talking about the pet cat that has been infected with the novel coronavirus in Belgium after being contaminated by its owner. This is Big Global News. Stay tuned. You are listening to The Pet Buzz with pet trendologist Charlotte Reed and veterinarian Dr. Michael Fleck. We would love to communicate with you via social media. Use The Pet Buzz social media channels on Twitter and Facebook to make a comment or ask a question. Post a picture of your pet on Instagram and tell us about his or her unique personality. You can also write to us at team at thepetbuzz.com. For more information about our show, our guests, and buzzworthy freebies, visit us at thepetbuzz.com. Warmer temperatures mean more time outside. You have sunscreen for yourself, but what about Fido? According to the American Animal Hospital Association and the American College of Veterinary Dermatology, pets need sunscreen too. Use EpiPet Sun Protector, the only FDA-approved pet sunscreen on short-haired, light-colored, hairless, golden retrievers, and other dogs susceptible to skin cancer. Contained in a sports bottle, EpiPet allows you to turn the bottle upside down, making it easier to spray your dog all over to protect your dog from the sun all day and every day. Visit epi-pet.com. I'm petronologist Charlotte Reed. And I'm veterinarian Dr. Michael Fleck. We are urban, suburban, and, and country. country. As we always start, we're going to open the segment up with global pet news. And now, pet buzz news from around the globe. Following a report that a dog owner who has been diagnosed with COVID-19, who had a German Shepherd dog that tested positive, now it seems a pet cat has been infected with the Nouvel coronavirus in Belgium after being contaminated by its owner. This is what the Belgian health authorities said to us this past Friday. Cases of a contamination of pets are rare and authorities have ruled out any risk of contamination to humans from home animals. In Belgium, the discovery was made by researchers at the Faculty of Veterinary Medicine in Liege. According to Dr. Emmanuel Andre, a government agency spokesman on the pandemic, he said this is considered an isolated case which can occur after close contact between animals and infected humans. The virus can be transmitted from humans to animals, but there is no reason to think that animals can be vectors of the epidemic in our society. 
in Hong Kong, we know that their dogs have had no symptoms of corona, although they've tested positive. While in Belgium, the cat is suffering from transitory respiratory shortness of breath and digestive problems like diarrhea. So far, there's no evidence that domestic animals can transmit the virus to humans or other pets. And that's really what the public authorities are saying as a precautionary measure. It's strongly recommended to apply standard rules of hygiene when dealing with your pets. Wash your hands after animal handling. Don't let them lick your face. That's all the global news until next week. And let's move on with our next guest. Let's talk spring cleaning. You know, everyone's talking about cleaning, disinfecting, and sanitizing to slow the spread of COVID-19. These days, we have so many people working from home and engaging in distance learning from home. And as a result, with the heightened awareness that the virus can be transmitted by touching contaminated objects, some individuals have started sanitizing their homes as a preventative measure. However, some of these sanitary products can be harmful to the pets. Joining us today to talk about being careful with these products in homes with your pet is veterinarian Dr. Tim Evans, an associate professor of toxicology in the Missouri University College of Veterinary Medicine, Veterinary Medical Diagnostic Laboratory. That was a mouthful. Yes, it was. Dr. Evans, thank you so much for joining us today for this very important topic on the Pet Buzz today. Well, I am really excited to be here to talk to you and, and to Charlotte, so uh, I'm, I'm ready to go. So why do we need to be careful concerning pets with cleaning our homes these days? Yeah, I think with the fact, with the concerns about COVID-19 and increased cleaning around the house, we're more likely to leave cleaning supplies out. We're more likely to maybe not follow the label directions, maybe not even read the label, just use more. And so we need to be careful in, in proper storage of these supplies and reading the label and following the directions. So can you talk a little bit more about birds, dogs, and cats and the risk of products with these individuals? Yeah, that's great. You know, birds have such an efficient respiratory system. And so with the, we talk about uh the canary in the cave. They can pick up airborne toxins much easier than than other animals. And so cleaning products, uh, birds just need to be kept in a well-ventilated room and, and away from the products and when, and when you're using them. So, Dr. Evans, that means I got to be careful when I spray my Lysol, right? Absolutely. And I think one of the things of this particular issue is... The things that we need to be aware of are the things that we've always needed to be aware of, but we're doing more of it more often. And so we need to be aware of uh, the cleaning supplies, obviously, with the spay disinfectants and what we put in the air. And, of course, you know, you guys know that dogs, I mean, dogs will eat or drink anything. I mean, literally. And so, you know, a bucket with water in it, it's, it's obviously something to drink. Cats. Cats are different because of the way they metabolize uh, some toxicants. And uh, again, uh, pine oil uh, containing uh, disinfectants. Uh, and there's lots of those products available in the market. Those are probably best not to use um, if you're going ahead and, and have, a, have a, a cat-friendly household. Great advice. Mm-hmm. Great advice. So what type of cleaning products are most effective in sanitizing surfaces in our home, and how should we be using them? Is there, I mean, obviously they're the instructions, but should we be diluting them? What should tell us? Yeah, and I think the most important thing is, is again, read the label. Most of the products that are approved for cleaning and disinfection have good instructions on how they need to be diluted. Some are ready to use. Some have to be diluted. For instance, uh, with bleach, and bleach can be very effective. If you get the 5.25% bleach, then you want to go ahead and, and, and the standard dilution is about a dilution of 1 to 32, bleach to water. If you get a stronger concentration bleach, such as 8.25%, that's about a third of a cup per gallon of water. And so it's important to see what the products that you have. Using right now greater than 70% alcohol solutions is important. That's what's going to particularly be effective with the with the coronavirus hey if you've just joined us we're talking with veterinarian dr tim evans about pets and safe cleaning so dr evans 
when cleaning, how should we treat our pets? Well, I think, and as I interpret that, uh, if we're going to be cleaning around the house, then probably the thing to do is to put our pets away from where we're actually doing the cleaning. And I know that's hard with cats because they want to jump up on counters and things like that. But when you do the cleaning, probably the best way to handle it with something like bleach is you go ahead and use the bleach. There's a particular, depending on the product, different contact times that you need to wait that it's contact with the surface to kill the viruses. And then at that point, it may be just fine to go ahead and wipe off the surface so that um, it's safe if you have a cat that's jumping up on surfaces or if you have small dogs that are that are walking on some of these surfaces and are liable to lick their paws and things like that. I guess it could be a big dog too. So what are the symptoms that pets can have when they're exposed to cleaning products? Talk about those. When we're talking about the most severe clinical signs are we could see in birds. Birds, we're going to see them have difficulty breathing or have them deperch or uh, possibly find them find them dead. Cats, if you're using the, the pine oil-based products, that can affect their blood. And so we may see them to be depressed. We may see them not eating and drinking. And so, again, as always in, in with our pets, it's important to watch them to make sure that they're eating and drinking and doing the things they normally do, looking for changes in behavior. Dogs, the most likely things we're going to see, we can see excessive uh, salivation, uh, drooling. We may see vomiting. And again, I think keeping a close watch on how your animals are behaving, I think it's always a good idea. It's just that much more important during this particular season when we're getting so many of these products out and using them around the home. You know, what great and timely information for the times right now, Dr. Evanson. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it's been great. It's a, it's the highlight of my day, talking to <laughs> talking to other people. <laughs> <laughs> We're laughing because, you know, everyone is living in this time of corona. And there, I mean, I, we find ourselves being so excited to talk to new people, uh, whether it's interviews. Everybody's a little like a little happier and a little like, you know, punchy. So that's great. Well, everyone, that was Dr. Tim Evans, an associate professor of toxicology in the Missouri University College of Veterinary Medicine's Veterinary Medical Diagnostic Laboratory. Got that out. Discussing why it's important (laughs) to use cleaning products safely when animals are in our homes. Good hygiene and sanitizing practices are par for the course these days. And for more information, visit cvm.missouri.edu. Well, that's the sign. It's always too soon to wrap the show. But before we go, we want to give you a preview of next week's show. So next week, we're talking about making over our pets for spring, how the global pet endemic is affecting pet businesses and recovery down under in Australia after the fires, a topic that I've been wanting to talk about for the last few weeks. Why don't we give some special thanks to our guests? Yeah, special thanks to our guests, Jim Tedford, Jenny Pan, and Dr. Tim Evans. And we want to remind you to sign up for our new newsletter. At Newsletter at the Pet Buzz. We must always thank our sponsors, the Animal Medical Center of Bradenton and EpiPet, making better skin coat and ear care products for healthier pets everywhere. And if you have a question, write us at team at thepetbuzz.com. We will cover it on our next show. And if you've missed any portion of the show, visit our social media channels as well as your favorite streaming channel and listen to the Link Podcast on Monday morning. Most importantly, remember we're here each week to help you take better care of your pets. Peace out and pet love. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Pet Buzz. The Pet Buzz is hosted by the dynamic pet duo, pet trendologist Charlotte Reed and Dr. Michael Fleck. Tune in each week for the latest 411 on everything pet related. Visit our website at www.thepetbuzz.com. Learn more about us, the show, and our guests.